On May 12, 2000, NASCAR's most famous driving family experienced its most heartbreaking moment. Just a month after making his debut in NASCAR's Winston Cup Series, Adam Petty was practicing for a Busch Series race at New Hampshire International Speedway. He was making a routine practice run whenever his throttle stuck entering Turn 3, resulting in a near head-on impact with the outside wall. At the ripe age of just 19, Adam Petty lost his life in this devastating crash. Today, we're going to cover the early life of Adam, his terrible accident, the fallout of the wreck, and pay tribute to a young man taken far too soon. Adam Petty was born in Trenton, New Jersey on July 10th, 1980, but he would end up growing up in High Point, North Carolina. Adam's family needs no introduction, as at the time he was born, his grandfather, Richard Petty, had cemented himself as the greatest driver of all time. His great-grandfather was an early pioneer of the sport, winning the first Daytona 500. Not to mention his dad Kyle had just won an ARCA race at Daytona in his first try the year prior and was in the midst of his second part-time Winston Cup season, racking up top 10 finishes. To say that Adam was destined to be a NASCAR driver would be an understatement. Adam began racing at only six years old competing in go-kart races. He climbed the ladder remarkably quickly for the time, progressing to mini sprints and legend cars. At this time, it was commonplace to see NASCAR rookies in their late 20s to mid 30s, but it was evident that Adam was on a trajectory far faster than that. In 1997, Adam made the step up into NASCAR's weekly series, and he ran 25 races. I couldn't find any statistics on his results that season, but he impressed enough to burst into the scene the following year, competing in many ranks. He raced nearly the full ASA season and managed several good runs, including a win at Roquemont. Petty was sporting the number 45, a continuation of his family's legacy of numbers. Adam's dad and grandfather saw enough out of him that they decided to get an ARCA program together for a couple of races at season's end. However, they couldn't have expected him to make the splash he did in his first race at Charlotte. He started in 6th place, went on to lead 27 laps, and win in his first ARCA start. Remember, this was a day in ARCA when there were a lot of competitive drivers. NASCAR regulars were racing part-time, and teams were dedicated to compete competitively every single week. There was of course controversy of whether Adam would live up to the petty name, especially since his father's career was not turning out as planned. But Richard Petty thought so. Adam has more desire than Kyle ever had. When Kyle came along, he wanted to drive a race car, but he also wanted to ride his motorcycles, play his guitars, get married the first thing all sorts of stuff. Adam is really, really focused. Kyle shared this conversation years later that he had with his mother. Daddy and Adam were walking together in the backyard talking. As I looked out the window at them, I told my mother, Richard Petty's finally got the son he never had. Adam also got a shot to drive in three Bush Series races at the end of 98, but not in Petty equipment. This shows that Adam wasn't just being carried by his name or his family's team. 1998 wasn't without controversy, as during an ASA race in September, Adam's crew chief was killed. Chris Bradley was making an adjustment under the car while it was on the jack, but didn't tell anyone he was going under. The jack man let the car down, and Adam did what he was supposed to do, take off. Chris was rushed to the hospital, but passed away during surgery. This was a terrible tragedy, and Adam wrestled with this for months, and probably the rest of his life. Luckily, he was supported by his family and the rest of his crew. The next year in 1999, Adam would attempt a full Bush Series schedule, racing for his dad. Being a 19-year-old who was quick and used to running near the front, it's really not surprising to say that Petty was pretty inconsistent. He wrecked a lot of cars after qualifying well, but he failed to qualify in three races. He managed only three top fives and four top tens, but not bad for an 18-year-old who was just getting started. Heading into 2000, 
Adam was set up for a big year as he now had some experience and was in position to even start running a few Cup Series races. But after the first few months of the season, the year had not really gone as planned. In 11 Bush Series races, Adam hadn't scored a single top 10 and was still making similar mistakes as the year prior. For example, he qualified 9th at Nashville and was taken out of contention in a big crash. After qualifying 13th at Texas, he crashed just halfway in. These accidents weren't all his fault, but just making it to the finish would have been his ultimate goal in order to gain experience. Despite this, he was given a chance to race in the Winston Cup Series for Petty Enterprises at Texas. Adam qualified 33rd and ran about two-thirds of the race before his engine let go and settled for a 40th place finish. Three days after this, the Petty family would lose Lee Petty after recently undergoing surgery for an abdominal aneurysm. Although things were doom and gloom for Adam's racing career at the moment, it was looking up. His father and grandfather were building the future of Petty Enterprises around him, and were looking to put him in full-time for the Winston Cup Series in 2001. Petty Enterprises had a drop-off in performance in recent years, However, they had a game plan to switch to Dodge as the manufacturer was re-entering the sport in 2001. Kyle later said that he was so determined to give Adam a shot and believed in him so much that he would have pulled the plug on his own entry to get Adam to cup. On the morning of May 12, 2000, Adam and his petty team rolled into New Hampshire for a practice session. The team was coming off solid finishes in two of the last three races, and had two top 10 qualifying efforts in the last four. Although they were off to a slow start, momentum was definitely building. Adam was in the middle of a routine run whenever his throttle stuck, a racer's worst fear. Adam would certainly not have had the time to react or do anything different. This was because he was entering the turn in his normal racing line and had no idea there was an issue. His car traveled at 130 miles per hour straight into the outside wall. Adam died instantly upon impact due to a basilar skull fracture. He was only 19 years old. The night of the wreck, Bill France had this to say, It is difficult to express our sadness over the passing of Adam Petty. The Petties are an integral part of the sport of NASCAR. The entire NASCAR community will miss Adam Petty. NASCAR immediately started an investigation on Adam's wreck, and tragically, NASCAR would have more material to work on for their investigation just eight weeks later. Kenny Irwin Jr. would also be killed at New Hampshire with a basilar skull fracture, but this time in NASCAR's Cub Series. In October, Tony Roper was killed at Texas Motor Speedway in a truck race. Three basilar skull fractures in three different cars in three different series in one season. Not to mention Del Earnhardt and Blaze Alexander's fatal crashes the following year. We know that Hans devices weren't mandated until October of 2001, but immediate safety restrictions were put in place. After Irwin's crash, switches were mandated to shut off the engine on the steering wheels of each car. Additionally, restrictor plates were added to the cars for the fall New Hampshire race. An emotional Kyle Petty would announce that he's racing the rest of the 2000 Bush season in Adam's place just days later. Kyle would also switch to the number 45 in 2001 in the Cup Series and raced it until his retirement in 2008. The Petty family started Victory Junction in 2004 in Adam's honor. The camp is for children with serious medical conditions or illnesses. Victory Junction is still active today and heavily honors Adam's legacy. When kids arrive at the camp, they're welcomed with a giant model of Adam's number 45 car. When you see these kids leave with a smile on their face, that's a little bit of Adam smiling with each one of them. Adam Petty was taken far too soon. In only 19 years of life, he showed that he had what it took to not only succeed on the track, but off the track as well. From all accounts, he was a highly motivated, smart, caring person who was following in his family's footsteps of becoming a racer. He didn't excel up the racing ladder just due to his family's name, as he won on his way through the ranks and showed everyone he was going to not only be a petty, 
but he was going to make a name for himself. His death was not in vain, as his death accelerated important safety developments such as safer barriers, the mandation of Hans devices, and more. He left a lasting impact on NASCAR forever, and his contributions will never be forgotten. It never crossed my mind to stop racing, said Kyle Petty. Instead, I felt called to continue racing, probably longer than I should have, just for Adam. Since the day I was born, I've been around racing. It's part of my DNA. Even when times were hard, even when tragedy struck, you always found a way to carry on. And that's what I did, too. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. But that's it for me in this video. I hope you did enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.